Rocks are diverse and in varying characteristics. They can be shiny, they can be dull, hard, brittle, they can be rough, they can be also smooth. But in order to understand the nature and types of rocks, we need to find their origin first, which are minerals. Minerals can be identified and they can make up almost every solid object in this planet. Studying this planet requires us to study its main solid ingredient, which are again minerals. Welcome to Earth and Life Science Rewind, video reviewers for Earth and Life Science. Our topic, the physical and chemical properties of minerals. <music> Senior high school students, I am Teacher Guillen and welcome to Earth and Life Science Rewind with your reviewers for Earth and Life Science. We will go back to the definition, characteristics, and properties of the rock forming minerals with the objective identify the physical and chemical properties of rock forming minerals. To start first, let us define what makes up a mineral. You can memorize it by NICOS or NICOS, a mnemonic. I use in teaching. First, minerals are natural form. They are naturally occurring in this planet. Next, they are inorganic. They are not related to living organisms. Number three, crystalline solid. And number four, an ordered arrangement of atoms. C and O are related to each other because the crystalline shape and appearance of minerals is related to their ordered arrangement of its atoms. Last is that minerals have a specific chemical composition and minerals are all also categorized in these chemical compositions. But how are minerals different from rocks? Let us now define their differences. Minerals are naturally occurring in organic solid and also they have a definite composition. How rocks differ is that they can be a mixture of different minerals. While minerals have a definite composition and are quote-unquote pure, rocks can be organic and can be mixed. So in a nutshell, minerals have definite composition while the rocks are composed of one or more minerals and at the same time they can also organic meaning they can be related to living organisms this rock is a mixture of feldspar biotite and amphibole those are minerals but this rock is called granite so granite as a rock is a mixture of minerals like feldspar biotite and amphibole so let's try answering is glass a mineral is glass a mineral does it violate one of the five characteristics of a mineral, namely NICOS, naturally occurring in organic, crystalline, ordered arrangement, and specific composition. So actually, glass is not a mineral because it is not naturally formed. Glass is man-made. How about this? Is pearl a mineral? Pearl is not a mineral for the reason that it is organic. Minerals should be inorganic, meaning not related to any other living organisms. It is organic in nature. It's produced by clamps. It's produced by living organisms. Scientists identify common minerals by many factors, not just color, not just appearance, but also the general properties, which are the color. Color, the color and appearance of the mineral. Streak, which is the color of the mineral when it's in powdered form. Hardness, meaning its resistance from being damaged or scratched. Cleavage, which is the tendency break and the pattern of breaking. Fracture, when there is no pattern of breaking. Luster, how light is reflected on a mineral, specific gravity, how heavy it is compared to its volume in water. And last, chemical composition, what compounds make up that mineral. First characteristic is the color of the mineral. Literally, most minerals have distinctive colors that can be used for identification. But unfortunately, color alone for a mineral is not reliable in identifying it. For example, this one. Clear, milky, smoky, rose, citrine, and amethyst are all the same mineral, which is quartz. So many minerals of the same kind have different colors, like the one I mentioned earlier. Also, varying minerals can have almost the same color. One of these is not really gold. They may look like gold, but one is fool's gold or pyrite, and the other is the real gold. So it can be confusing if you use color alone as the factor. A more reliable property or determining the color is the streak, which is the color of the mineral in the powder form. It's done by rubbing the mineral itself across a plate or a white porcelain. And again, it's a more reliable way of identifying a mineral. Most mineralogists do that in order to really identify what the color of the mineral really is. Some colors of these minerals are not really the same with their streak. Like for example, 
pro sports and amateurs. They may look like different colors, but they have the same streak because they are both quartz. Again, the two minerals here are both quartz, but some of the quartz have different colors. Bottom line, streak is more reliable than color. Hardness as a property of the mineral is its resistance to scratching. Can it be scratched? Or what materials can scratch it? Minerals may be described depending to a stand of scale of 10 minerals known as the Moss Scale of Hardness. The higher you are in the number, the harder and more resistant you are to scratch it. Number 1 and 2, Talc and Gypsum, can be scratched by merely a fingernail, just like in this video. Fluorite and Apatite, which is 4 and 5, can scratch a copper point. Those are higher up in the chart can scratch those below them. Quartz can scratch glass and conundrum, which is number 9, can scratch number 8 opens. Again, hardness is a measure of the mineral's resistance to scratching. You can see here that the cleavage of these minerals, halite and calcite, are in varying planes. So they have shapes when they break. And cleavage can be described in different planes. So can you break in one direction only? Two directions, three varying angles. That is cleavage. Fracture is the absence of cleavage, meaning there are irregular breaking lines of minerals and there is no pattern when it is broken. Fractures can be irregular. You know, you cannot find any pattern there at all. Or it can be conchoidal, meaning it's not a plane, but it's a shell-like surface when an object is breaking. Luster as a property indicates how much the surface of the mineral reflects light, or basically how shiny a mineral is. Some minerals can shine like they are metals, but not literally metals. We can call that metallic luster. And luster is described in different ways a mineral shines. Dull or earth can be waxy, glassy, adamantine or diamond-like, or silky. The specific gravity is the relative heaviness of the mineral compared to its volume in water. You can see here in this diagram, it takes 2 liters of water to actually weigh the same as this mineral. So it means 2 liters of water is as heavy as this mineral in 1 liter. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So the mineral here has a specific gravity of 2. Meaning the mineral in its volume of 1 liter has twice the weight of water. Specific gravity is really important for mineralogists to identify if some minerals are really legit. And last, the chemical properties of minerals. Mineralogists test minerals for their chemical properties. They can add acid, they can add bases, they can test the components of their minerals. That is how they categorize them according to their main ingredient. Like for example, silicates. Silicates are minerals with silicon and oxygen as their main ingredient. Oxides are basically metals that mix with oxygen. Sulfates are mixed with sulfate, which is SO4. And sulfides are metals mixed with sulfur. Carbonates have their main ingredient, carbonate, CO3, with other metals. Calcium carbonate, chalk, is one of them. Dolomite is one of the carbonates. Native element minerals are almost pure. Um, gold ores, Copper ores, silver ores, so basically native elements are the sources of precious minerals. And halides, which are metals mixed with elements in group number 7 of the periodic table. So how do we relate minerals to everyday life? How can we relate this lesson to practical use? Minerals may sound nerdy, they may sound too scientific, but they have been the foundations of engineering. Construction pipes, concrete, Metals from the bikes and canned goods that you use, we use minerals. Metals are processed from minerals. Batteries use minerals. The watches and the clocks you use use quartz, which is a mineral. Even feldspar is used as a construction material in cement and concrete. Graphite is usually the lead in your pencils, and it's a mineral. And quartz and many of its variations are used as jewelers. Amethyst, jade, and other you know jewelries. <laughs> so again, to wrap up our reviewer for today, minerals are defined as NiCoS or NiCoS, naturally formed, inorganic, crystalline and ordered arrangement of atoms, and specific chemical composition. Also, they have physical and chemical properties such as the color, the streak, hardness, cleavage, fracture, luster, specific gravity, and last, the chemical composition. Let's test your knowledge. Pause this video and try to answer this short 5 item quiz. So, resume the video to know the answers in this quiz. 
the quiz resumes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here are your answers for this quiz. Thank you for watching this video reviewer, and I hope you have refreshed your lessons in this episode of Earth and Life Science Rewind, the physical chemical properties of minerals. I am Teacher Guillen, and see you next time on the next Earth and Life Science Rewind. Video reviewers for Earth and Life Science. Thank you.